I'm back with Bahram Adari, the host of Sufism, Essence of Islam, a new program set to begin airing on Sunday nights on Omni Television at 9 p.m. Bahram, we were talking about Sufism. Now, there's a, under, in my understanding of Sufism is some, some forms of it have um, a mystical element that they do these dances, these whirling dervishes. Tell me a little bit about what these are. They're, they're quite beautiful in their display. Yeah. Well, I mean, we understand that the whole creation is, is, sub, is submitted to the will of Allah or beloved. So everything is turning, everything is turning. You look at every stars, every planet, the whole thing is, is in, uh, under decree or order and they're doing the beautiful job. Now, the Sufi dance means you actually turn in the same direction as the whole universe is dancing. Sama is the name, means hearing, hearing that beautiful divine music that is played. So there's music being played? Well, the music that comes from the divine, yeah, okay. from there. That is, you put yourself in harmony with all the nature and uh, the whole creation and dance with it. Put one hand on your right, on your heart, okay, and one hand up. So you look, your heart means something that is turning because we live on earth, therefore we have material need. So the heart uh, beats sometimes toward our material things, sometimes, sometimes toward the uh, divine. Mm -hmm. So it's dancing and bringing yourself into harmony and through that you do your prayers and you work toward to, to the outside observer, that would uh, you almost it, there's a beautiful element to it. All these people in these robes and spinning and the and these dancing is going. So the outside outside observer often it looks like they're almost in a trance. Is that true? Do exactly. They, they, a trance comes on them. Exactly. I mean, Sufis do many things. Uh, as we said earlier, we said Sufism, the heart, yeah, is the passion, passion mm -hmm. of Islam. Now, the only way you could express that passion, that love toward beloved, is through music, art. Uh, dancing, uh, true art, uh, architecture. Yeah, art art, art all seems to be very important. Very, in very important. Therefore, the Sufis are dancing and hearing that. Now, what happens here? You, you may see Sufis that do extraordinary miracles and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Now, this comes to the concept that uh, in Quran it calls Khalq Jadid or new creation, uh, perpetual creation. That means, according to Quran, everything is. Uh, dying and r uh, renewing itself at all time. Mm -hmm. So you and I sitting here, we're not the same as we were the moment ago. Mm -hmm. So this uh, process of renewation happening all the mm -hmm. time. And so therefore, uh, everybody is uh, renewing itself. This what the Sufis do. They say at that time, that something gets in interrupted. Before it gets renewed, you, you can change the direction of that thing. Mm -hmm. So it works on perception. For example, you know, many people, they. Uh, ask other people to change their religion or mm -hmm. join their group or so, happens because you change somebody's per perception. Now, we believe people of God, people of divine, uh, mystical, mystic people, Jesus and um, uh, Moses and Prophet Muhammad, what their effect was at the time they could see, they look at something that is uh, withering, at that time they could change it and bring it back to life. Do, does, so that does, is, does a Sufi, do, is it, or do they, in a sense, evangelize? Is there a sense of trying to change other people's perspective to be, make them become a Sufi? No. Like, should I become Sufi? No. First of all, uh, in, even in Islamic and Islamic Sufi, you cannot ask, ask people to change their religion hmm. because everybody has to experience God through their own uh, ontological way. For example, you cannot, if I experience God, I cannot come and tell you what God is like, yeah? Uh, so you cannot ask people. It's deeply people, personal. Then it's a very you, personal. It's about you and the creation. And it's you about must, your interpretation of the Quran too. Exactly. About understanding of that. So you have to experience God. You have to experience God, and that experience is all valuable to you. Uh, and of course, your service, your uh, duty is to help other people and give your service, despite what the religion, what their faith, what the, what they're thinking are. There is a story that Sufis always talk about. Rumi talks about it that. Prophet Abraham invited a man to his house and he was feeding him. Then he realized the guy was an unbeliever. He kicked him out of his house. Now God says, why did you kick him out? He says, well, because he was an unbeliever. And God says, I knew he was an unbeliever before, before he was born. I never cut his bread. How did you decide? So the Sufis is about this. You must give your service. You must give regardless your... Of, regardless of... Regardless of... Talk and, to me about, and not change people. Right. Uh, people have to do that themselves through you know, perception. They have to experience God. Uh, many people think about Islam and they think about uh, the, the, the disparaging uh, difference between males and females and the role of women in Islam. Uh, women are being veiled, the, the, uh, wearing um, 
clothing that is, you know, trying to seal them up at, what, at some level. How does the Sufi understand the role of women? Well, I mean, uh, according to Quran itself, women are, have the highest place. They are the most beautiful reflection of God himself. And Prophet Muhammad come to an area which was totally barbaric uh, at that time. So uh, that uh, part of the world was totally barbaric. They used to kill women because men were getting killed in war. They had too many women and too many mouths to feed. Therefore, they used to bury them. So Prophet Muhammad, the first thing he did, he brought, uh, he stopped killing off the women. He freed women by uh, bringing, it was, uh, Islam was the first religion or first uh, culture that brought the right to divorce for women. I mean, we're talking about 1,400 years ago. Right to divorce, right to inheritance. And many women became referee in the markets. Many women stood on the member and talked. So during Prophet Muhammad, women were free. So, so how it, come that's not going on now? Well, because these Islam? men are, you know, men are... Sexist. Men yeah. are sexist Let's say and, and interpret things the mm -hmm. way they want. Mm -hmm. Now, if I may so, you know, all days when we used to go to the school of Sufis, they used to put this lamp and they put a box around it with lots of holes. Now, when these lights, you turn the lights on, lots of lights come out of that. Mm -hmm. Now, they used to tell us, Allahu nur samawat, as the Quran says, God is the light between heaven, heavens. Now, that light is God. All this light reflex comes out of these holes is us. But we all separate. We don't know our source is one. And therefore, as we get further, we're seeking identity for ourselves. And that seeking identity, we start hatred, and we find the difference between genders and black and white and this and that. You know, you start hatred toward other cultures. And Now, they say, look, when you go back to your source, the source is one. You all came from one. Unity of being, la ilaha illallah, when you hear, that means nothing exists but God. Everything is the reflection of God, and everything will return to God. Mm -hmm. So in this world, when you come, don't try to look for those differences. Try to find what your essence is. Mm -hmm. Once you, that's why our program called, sometimes we call it Sufi, the essence of Islam, sometimes the heart of Islam. Because I, I the essence is show, the same. Because yeah. the show's coming up, and I want to have a little chance sure. to discuss it right after this break. One final segment with Bahram Adari right after this break.